Hello, I'm Sejun. Welcome to my channel. Today, I will be sharing my thoughts on Billie Eilish's song "I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore." To hear the original music, please check out this link. As I listen to Billie Eilish's song and her interview afterwards on Genius, I find an amazing resonance between her work and Kierkegaard's philosophy. I also think that through her music, Billie brings listeners to a deeper appreciation of what is at stake in our lives. To briefly introduce. Billie Eilish is a talented American singer and songwriter. A lot of her songs touch on themes of love, self, relationships, gender, and climate change. And Kierkegaard is a Danish philosopher from the 19th century, who is usually considered as the father or even grandfather of existentialism. For more content on Kierkegaard and the theme of despair, please check out other videos on my channel. I'm currently creating a series of videos on his book *The Sickness Unto Death*. The video is meant to be a light and careful analysis, as with all artworks, interpretations can vary widely. And I look forward to seeing your insights in the comment section below. So thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. So let's begin with the title and also the central repeated line of the song. I don't want to be you anymore. According to Billy in the interview, the you refers to herself. Really, 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 really hate myself. You know, you can feel so unbelievably lost and horrible, and like you're nothing and you're invisible, and for no reason at all, which is almost worse than having a reason. Clearly, this song is about her internal struggle with a deep-seated dissatisfaction with who she is. This is qualified to be called Kierkegaardian despair. Kierkegaard defines despair as an existential or spiritual illness in which you reject yourself, want to get rid of yourself, and yearn to become someone or something else. Kierkegaard suggests that despair often seems tied to specific life issues or circumstances, which he calls despairing over something. Billie Eilish captured this sentiment in her line, "Don't be that way, fall apart twice a day." This expresses her frustration with having irregular emotional breakdowns. The constant emotional turmoil and exhaustion can lead to a desire to become someone different, like someone who doesn't experience emotions as intensely and deeply as Billy. However, Kierkegaard would say that when you look closer at your despair, what you are actually despairing over is the self. Like Billy also says in the interview. You can feel the strong negation and hatred towards yourself, even for no reason at all. Later in the lyrics, she also questioned if she's fundamentally flawed or broken, asking, "Was I made from a broken mold?" This concurs with what Kierkegaard is saying that despair can be brought on just by one's capacity to self-reflect. He said. The advance over pure immediacy manifests itself at once in the fact that despair is not always occasioned by a blow, by something happening, but can be brought on by one's capacity for reflection. So that despair, when it is present, is not merely a suffering, a succumbing to the external circumstances, but is to a certain degree self-activity, an act. So despair is not always triggered by a specific life event or incident. Such as losing a job, failing a test, or breaking up with someone. Instead, it can arise from our innate capacity for introspection. When we experience despair, it's not just a passive reaction to external circumstances; it involves active self-engagement. After hearing this, you may ask, "Wait a minute. So, if we take Kierkegaard's definition of despair seriously, then probably there are a lot of people in despair." Well, yes. As Kierkegaard says, there's not one single living human being who does not despair a little, who does not secretly harbor an unrest, an inner strife. It's not an unusual phenomenon in human life, nor does it only occur in times of crisis. Kierkegaard calls despair a widespread and almost universal existential sickness, and he includes himself as one of the sick. In the interview, Billy noticed that when you don't want to be yourself, knowing that you are always you forever is quite terrifying. I think Kierkegaard would totally agree with Billy Eilish. He described despair as a tormenting contradiction, where the I wants to be rid of itself but cannot. It's like you are stuck in you forever. The etymology of despair means without hope, and the hopelessness of Kierkegaardian despair lies in the realization that there is no future in which you can be anyone other than yourself, 
and that can be horrifying. Next, let's look at these excellent lines in the song. If teardrop could be bottled, there'd be swimming pool filled by models, to the tie dress is what makes you a whore. First off, it's great that Billy takes a word as harsh as whore and wraps it into something hauntingly beautiful. Beyond that, I think Billy and her brother highlight how external judgments and societal labels can deepen our internal despair. You know, models are often perceived as the embodiment of beauty standards that many people strive to reach, and yet even they are not exempt from harsh scrutinies, feelings of inadequacies, and self-rejection. You see, despair isn't just individuals' failure to relate to themselves properly. It's also a characteristic of our current world, for we participate in social practices that are saturated with and exacerbate despair. It wouldn't be surprising if despair had serious consequences for society, such as being linked to mental health issues, drug use, eating disorders, and more. German philosopher Martin Heidegger observed that, in everyday inauthentic life, Human beings tend to get lost in the chatter of the crowd, which he calls das Mann or the they. For example, people measure themselves by comparing what others are and have, by their achievements and failures. In doing so, they slip into various forms of self-forgetfulness, which Kierkegaard would call despair, a failure to notice and become a self. To outweigh this negative influence requires some practice of self-confrontation in an honest manner. As in Billie Eilish's music video, she stands in front of a mirror and devotes herself to a frank conversation. In another book by Kierkegaard, Art Building Discourses in Various Spirits, he also uses the metaphor of a mirror to convey the importance of confronting one's existence and taking a hard look at oneself. A mirror, it is true, has the feature that a person can see his image in it, and then one must stand still. If one hastily hurries by, one gets to see nothing. Ironically, we now live in a culture of self-actualization which commodifies self-love. Sometimes we may be tempted to think that self-acceptance is straightforward and easily attainable. Billy's next line about breaking promises, namely, if I love you with a promise, would you break it if you are honest, reflects a concern about not being truthful enough in her declarations of self-love. In that sincere conversation with herself, she basically admits and expresses that she actually doesn't want to be herself. That is, while she may outwardly claim to love herself, internally, she struggles to uphold this promise. By confronting and admitting her despair, Billy transitioned from unconscious despair, where she might not fully recognize her inner turmoil, to a conscious state of self-rejection and yearning for a different existence. Despair is a moment in our lives when our relationship with ourselves falters. Just like in many other personal relationships, honest communication can be more productive than silently dwelling on a problem, right? Kierkegaard distinguishes between conscious and unconscious despair. Conscious despair is when a person is aware of their despair and its implications, whereas unconscious despair is when a person is in despair but does not recognize it as such. In the state of unconscious despair, individuals are either completely oblivious to their existential plight or misinterpret their issues. For example, some people claim that they are in despair after breaking up with someone. But for Kierkegaard, the real despair is that they cannot accept themselves without the existence of another person. That is, their self-acceptance is actually conditional. Kierkegaard believed that unconscious despair is particularly insidious because this lack of awareness prevents the possibility of confronting and overcoming one's repressed self-negation leading to the withering and dying of one's spirit or potential. Kierkegaard captured this idea with this line. There's so much talk about wasting a life, but only that person's life was wasted who went on living so deceived by life's joy and its sorrows that he never became decisively and eternally conscious as a spirit, as a self. 
In conscious despair, on the other hand, the person recognizes their disconnection from themselves and grapples with the implication of this disconnection. Like Billie Eilish, they are able to confront the sincerity of their proclamations of self-love and question whether they truly want to be themselves in various aspects. However, this also means that as a person becomes more aware of their existential condition, their despair brings more and more psychological and even physiological pain. Kierkegaard points out, the ever-increasing intensity of despair depends upon the degree of consciousness or is proportionate to its increase. The greater the degree of consciousness, the more intensive the despair. As Billy sings, hands getting cold, losing feelings getting old, was that made from a broken mold? In Billy's case, her lyrics and introspection indicate a conscious awareness of her despair, which is painful. In Kierkegaard's theory, conscious despair can be further categorized into in despair not to will to be oneself and in despair to will to be oneself, or defiance. Billy's despair seems to fall into the first category, in despair not to will to be oneself, which is I don't want to be myself anymore. You see, although conscious despair is difficult to navigate, it also opens the possibility for deep self-understanding and authentic living. In the last part of the lyrics, I start to see some reconciliation and intimacy the singer has with herself. Hers I can't shake, we've made every mistake, only you know the way that I break. Billy's song is sincere and excellent. It promotes self-transparency and encourages us to pay more attention to developing a healthy relationship with ourselves. It's an example where an artist's greatness shines through misery. Being human means always having the capacity to despair, and despair is a fundamental part of the human condition. For Kierkegaard, one can only experience despair if they have a self, which is, in the first place, amazing. Elsewhere, Kierkegaard laments that modern society has created a culture of constant comparison, where we are so busy trying to meet societal standards that we lose sight of our inherent value as human beings. We've forgotten, as Kierkegaard underlines, the uplifting, simple, elementary thoughts about how glorious it is to be human. That's my thoughts on Billy Eilish's song and Kierkegaard's philosophy. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye!